Hey there, my name is Diana Hall, and I want to take some time today to talk about how we can strengthen Salesforce orgs by using some of the security features that, that Salesforce has. And we're going to speak specifically to enabling API access controls, why we should do it, and some best practices around it. I'm going to go through a PowerPoint presentation and then a quick demo using a Trailhead account. So who am I? Uh, my name is Diana Hull. I am a certified sales application architect and an all-star ranger. Um, I've been working with the Salesforce platform since 2015 in a variety of different roles. And in the last few years, I've been focused as a senior product manager uh, working for a large enterprise company and really focused on uh, user management and access and security, which is where this comes into play. So a lot of the times when we are a product manager, a product owner, or anybody really working with Salesforce, we come across and we'll have these business needs. Um, so we might have somebody in sales operations and they wanna be able to sync their calendar to Calendly because it helps them save time when they're trying to enter information in Salesforce. Or we need somebody who wants to be able to use their Salesforce credentials to maybe log into Workbench or help documents, uh, run a report, create a list view, different things that, you know, they might need a connected app to be able to connect to and use that functionality. So our goal is to how can we support business requirements along with security requirements and make sure that we're providing the functionality needed, but thinking about the security around it as well. And one great feature that Salesforce has available is API access controls. So this allows us to make sure that any app that is being connected to is approved. And we can also add policies around it. So we can lock down what users can connect to that app, how often the token needs to be refreshed, and, and be able to, <laughs> when security comes to us and says why, uh, we can provide them that information. So what are API access controls? So this is a feature that if your org is not brand new, you might not even have available to you. So it's something that you need to call and contact your Salesforce rep and ask them to enable this feature. And once it's on, it makes it so that any of your third-party apps that you have need to be admin approved or system admin approved before a user can connect to them. So um, one of these is that we love using is Salesforce Inspector, right? So previously, and it's it's relatively new with the Salesforce Reloaded, um, at least from my experience, is that it used to be a Google Chrome extension. And if you wanted to be able to use Salesforce Inspector in Salesforce, you couldn't do that with API access controls in place because there was no connected app um, that was associated to it. So in order to use it, you would have had to provide that user with an override permission that took away the restriction of API access controls. Um, also with turning on API access controls, we have seen some challenges with the developer console being able to run some queries. So once again, it's, it's, you know, being able to understand where you're using these different functionality, who should have access, and then solving and solutioning for those specific use cases, but making sure that they're more the exception and not the general rule. Um, so when we come into our connected app section, I think everybody's really familiar with connected apps and looking at what we have, but there's another section that's a connected app OAuth section. And this is where people come in and you might have a user that is a salesperson. So they're able to connect to some things um, already, but if we don't have API access controls in place, that means they can use their Salesforce um, credentials to connect to other apps. So that's where, you know, if you go into your connected app OAuth section in Salesforce, you can see the options next to somebody who's connected to it that you can either install or block it. 
But doing it this way makes it very reactive, right? You're having to come in here, make sure that your users have it connected to something that might not be reviewed or might not be okay from security, or you might not even really know what it's used for. So we want to make sure that we're, we can be a little bit more proactive and that we turn on the API access controls because then it doesn't allow people to connect to it, but it does allow the option for it to be installed or unblocked, right? It's going to come in and block it immediately because we don't want people just connecting to things that we haven't authorized. So that way, um, you can set it up for different credentials on who should use it. Salesforce admins no longer are having to be reactive to this and constantly looking at it to see if somebody's connected to something they shouldn't have. Um, so one of the things about you know implementing API access controls is you really need to make sure that you understand what the users have connected to and why. Because once these are turned on, it will remove access to them and you have to go through and update those policies. Uh, there might be some APIs that you're using, depending on how, you know, legacy your system is, that um, you need to provide a separate permission to make it work. So as any time we're doing something in Salesforce, make sure you're using your sandbox and testing this fully. And creating a document of, you know, what this app is for, um, even going that one step further, do you have a security team that is engaged with how you're implementing things in Salesforce? You know, how are we passing uh, personal information to this third-party app? How are, are they storing that information? So once you kind of open, <laughs> open that uh, information, you could kind of look and go, okay, well, now I understand it. Now I really do want to lock it down. So it's just giving you a little bit more power as an admin, as somebody who's responsible for our system and making sure that it's as secure as possible. Um, so to enable API access controls, once again, contact your Salesforce support person um, if you don't have this API access controls in place. Um, and then, you know, like I said, test um, in a sandbox to make sure that turning on the admin approved limit and you know the allow visual force pages because you want your you should or could want your APIs to work through your visual force pages, um, turn that on, but that you're then testing it to make sure that there aren't any big impacts. And then if there are, there is a permission set called use any API client that can be created for those one-off scenarios. So it's it's not about limiting the functionality is just making sure that we are supporting the user's business functionality, but also thinking about the security of the system. Um, so kind of just a little talk through here about creating uh, policies for connected apps, you know, making sure that you set your token refresh policy. If it's a user, you want to immediately expire that refresh token. So if for some reason the browser gets hacked, that they can't um, use that token to log in uh, maliciously. And then for service accounts, there might be some accounts. I know that we have, you know, they're like own or some others that are using more of a username password that they need that refresh token to uh, not expire. And then for those, we need to document them or I would suggest documenting them and then making sure that you're putting some kind of a credential rotation process in place so that the token's getting um, expired and refresh every certain amount of time along with the password that's being used. So again, you know, adding some of the security measures into your system. Um, and then making sure that you're adding your profiles. So to enable the connected app, once you have that connected app installed, we can add what profile should have access to it. And then if you don't want to do it profile level, because we are moving to permission sets and permission set groups from a Salesforce perspective, you can also do it with permission sets. So if you only want certain users to be able to use Workbench or Salesforce Inspector or some of those, you can create a work uh, permission that's only available for those make it so it's a permission set as part of the connected app and then only of those users will be able to access that um, connected app 
So, I mean, I think one of the things is we've been hearing a lot around Salesforce org security and making sure that customer data is protected. It seems that there's been a lot of things in the news about, you know, connected apps or third-party vendors. And I'm not talking just about Salesforce, but in general, um, where, you know, there is a company that has a data breach. And when it comes down to it, it's because of a third-party vendor. And based on, you know, reading, you know, it's identified that third-party vendors are five times more likely to exhibit poor security. Um, So that's why we want to make sure that we're reviewing the third-party apps that we're connecting and and making sure that they're authorized. And in implementing the API access controls can really help to make sure that we're not being reactive, that we're being able to be proactive in, in setting these things up. So with that, I'm going to go and switch over to my trailhead and just give a little demo. So for me, whenever I want to kind of go and find API access controls or OAuth or any of those things, I like using my quick find. So this is a org. Um, it's a trailhead org, and it does not have API access controls in place. So I think everybody is very familiar with connected apps. These are ones that you manage the connected apps. You've either, either created them manually or they've been part of a managed package or installed package where you've got these in here, you can come in, you can look at them. And um, a lot of the times they're probably gonna be related to Salesforce or maybe other managed packages you have. And as you can see here, all users may self-authorize. So we don't have, and there's no uh, access restrictions on who can use this in this system. Um, so that's one place we always want to look. But another place is the connected apps OAuth usage. So this is kind of the section of where people have come in or users that have access to be able to connect to one connected app with their username and password have also connected to something else that maybe we weren't even aware of. So in this example, I've got Salesforce Inspector Reloaded here and I've connected to it. But when we're looking at it, oops, there's no policies in place. So there's no, I don't have to refresh my token. You know, I can use this as long as I want and be able to connect to Salesforce Inspector. Um, it's not installed. So anybody is open to using this. So when we look at a system that has API access controls in place, we have the API access. We can do the quick search, the API access controls have been enabled in this org um, with, like I said, the admin approved users and the allow visual force pages. Then when we go up to our OAuth connection section, we can see that they look a little bit differently. So we've got them all installed. We've got managed app policies in place. If we hadn't had the policies in place and somebody had just tried to connect to it, it would come in like that screenshot earlier of being um, either block or install, but still nobody could use it. And we come in, we can go in here. This has been installed. This is to look at help desk. And then we can also add our profiles if we want to add You know what profile should have access to it. Um, and then of course, any permissions that we do. So definitely a, a more lockdown. As you can see, your permitted users or admin approved users are pre-authorized. So that's one of the things that API access controls do is when you're looking at all of your connected apps. Instead of seeing that self, the users may self-authorize, it switches them all to admin approved users or pre-authorized. So then it comes down to making sure that you're setting your policies on all of these apps that are in the system and then identifying who can access them. So I do also have a couple of little references here, um, you know, where there's articles around API access control, directions on installing a connected app, um, the cybersecurity article that I mentioned in the deck. And then there's also a trailhead. So you can get some hands-on learning with your super badge. 
Um, so with that, um, I hope you learned something today that maybe you weren't aware of. And if you stayed here for the entire time, thank you so much for your time. Um, have a wonderful day. Thank you.